Good morning, and thank you to the Academy for the opportunity to be a part of this uh, important workshop. And I have nothing to disclose. In Toronto, we have been working with an interfaculty pre-licensure pain curriculum since 2002. This is a mandatory 20-hour curriculum for six health science faculties. We've recently just added the physician assistants as well. When we started in 2002, there were some small interprofessional initiatives uh, at the university that were not very positively um, appreciated by both faculty and students. So the, the focus of this curriculum is on pain management, but within an interprofessional context. And we did that to get buy-in. So the goals are that the graduates will understand that pain is a unique and frequently encountered problem that can require comprehensive collaborative management and that they will begin to develop the skills required to give evidence-based clinical judgments so important for pain assessment and management within both their individual and their interprofessional team scope of practice. All of our students in health sciences are second entry, so they come in with a, de a degree in a wide variety of uh, of degrees in terms of uh, chemistry, physiology, humanity, social sciences. So they are a very diverse group, which is part of the uh, wonderful aspect, but it's also part of the challenge. The largest number of students come from medicine, nursing, and pharmacy. But except for the smaller physician assistant group, the rest of them are approximately around 100. The 20 hours goes across three days. The students have a mandatory online module that they do individually day one and day three. The only large multi-professional session that we now have is on the first morning when students come together, all of them, to hear patients tell about their experiences. And also there's a panel where uh, the interprofessional group talk about their perspectives. The afternoon, we allow faculties to choose their own pain topic. But it's interesting that often they link, for example, nursing has done this with uh, pharmacy. Medicine and dentistry have often planned this together. And, some, and the other uh, occupational therapy and physical therapy. Day two are the smaller multi-professional sessions in the morning for concurrent sessions, and we do have some patients and family involved in that. 50% of the time, though, is spent in small interprofessional groups working on patient care plans. Most of this is uh, facilitated. So we have replaced the large didactic sessions that we had that were not that highly evaluated in these two mandatory modules. And the opioid module is about principles, and the, the theme is that it's an interprofessional responsibility. Whether you are a prescriber or not, you have to know about opioids. And the pain mechanisms and manifestations also uh, is both of these are well received. The focus is on patient cases, so that makes it interesting for them, and there are several quizzes that they do. The concurrent sessions, we offer eight that are repeated, so the students have a choice of two, and they are uh, clinically focused. You can see that they uh, focus on strategies, uh, physical, pharmacological, psychological, and the presenters represent, uh, each, each uh, concurrent session has several presenters and they talk about their own perspective. We have added this year um, an in strategies, uh, indigenous approaches that relate to our First Nation population around wellness. 
The students are assigned to an interprofessional group of 30. And then within that group of 30, they are assigned to a team of 10. Uh, each of the um, teams is interprofessional, but you can see that the mix isn't exactly the same because the faculty uh, numbers vary. There's a facilitator usually for each team, and we have a lead facilitator because of previous experience, and that person talks to the other two facilitators in advance. This is mandatory. The students evaluate the facilitator, and if they are negative comments, they don't get asked back. The, uh, the, the facilitators, well, sometimes the facilitator likes to give a lecture to show how much they know. That's not facilitation. But we do, uh, we do offer, I mean, these are, the facilitators are volunteers from our faculty and our clinical agencies. And so to have some standardization, uh, we do have a manual and an orientation session for them that outlines the objectives and the timing of moving uh, the students through the cases. Uh, they address the interprofessional nature of facilitating groups. We do role playing and a lot of discussion around strategies for encouraging respect, positive discussion and collaboration. We cannot have somebody saying that there's no role for the nurse in this case. I have a lineup at my door afterwards. Uh, there is a feedback session for the uh, facilitator, so again, we look at what they say. These are the patient cases this year. Uh, a man with lung cancer, a, a, a teenager with idiopathic arthritis, and a man with traumatic amputation. These are the persistent pain uh, uh, cases, and we handled addiction in the third one. The students really evaluate the interprofessional group work very highly, and there are all kinds of resources online for them because of their varied background. Here's some of the comments. The cases brought all professions together, showed us we all had a valuable role in pain management, made me realize how pain may impact every area of a patient's life, I was able to see and hear problem-solving approaches from different health professionals. And I have increased respect for other professions and their roles in patient care. So there is this um, learning about the relationship between pain and the social determinants of health, the impact of it, as well as the need for collaboration and future uh, referrals to and, and working with people outside of their own uh, professional. It's important to have all of the speakers representing the professions. It varies every year, but that's very critical in terms of the optics of the student. The facilitators all have to be represented in terms of the faculties, and we get help from the faculties to do this. We've been really fortunate with the people that we've had as, who participate on the pain curriculum uh, committee uh, they, because they've had uh, authority for curriculum. We've had associate deans, chairs of uh, curriculum committees. We have students. Every faculty has a rep. We always have librarians because of the uh, extensive resources we offer. Not every faculty person thinks this is a great idea and that they don't know anything about pain and they're not sure about IPE. And so uh, they have to be represented, but what we do is we have subcommittees and we get them helping us with evaluation, case development, or uh, facilitation. We do a lot of evaluating and we get ethics approval every year. We do have pay knowledge and beliefs pre and post tests. The students are asked about the daily content and process in terms of evaluating, and we do evaluate their pa the patient care plans. Recently, though, we've also been wanting uh, and looking at the interprofessional collaboration. You can see that there has been a change in the, um, the increase in the scores from the pre to the post-test for pain knowledge and beliefs between 2002 
and 2018, because when we started in 2002, faculties had little or no pain content, most of them. And so an, uh, an outcome of the curriculum, a positive outcome, is that the faculties now teach their own uni-professional pain content. And uh, while the increase this year was 7%, that's fine. We have done a recent mapping to see where there's now overlap and where the gaps are. The evaluations for uh, daily uh, process and content questionnaires are usually very positive. And if there's an issue, it's usually that the room for the small group work was noisy, something like that. We do look at the, at the care plans. We uh, used to look at them all, uh, but we decided this was too much. So we, we randomly select 10 uh, care plans from each of the three cases. They're reviewed by two people. And the average score was 11 out of 13, which is good. This kind of helps us to see whether uh, they, there are gaps that we need to build in the next year. We have many questions about how we've done it and what we do, and so we've recently published the Pain Interprofessional Curriculum Design Model in Pain Medicine. This is uh, patient-centered, um, th but the design really, in terms of guiding our thinking, has four key questions that are interrelated, dynamic, collaborative, and based on uh, pain uh, competencies. The why is critical. I mean, if you're lucky enough to have somebody say, do this, great. But to have faculty, students, governments understand the rationale, the cu current culture, including the opioid crisis, it really, we really need to sell why this is important. Who are the stakeholders in the community? And again, this can go beyond our own university, our agencies, the work that Scott Fishman, Dan Carr are doing around government, the regulators. What are we going to do in terms of the content, the priorities, but also what's feasible? And how are we going to do it in terms of we use a lot of small groups, um, but there are, there, the point is to try and think through what's realistic for one's own context. So our IPC is iterative. I mean, we do a lot of evaluation and we build in every year uh, what uh, people have commented on or, or what the challenges are. Uh, we certainly are looking at uh, what are now are the overlaps? It's been really exciting that faculties have uh, picked the ball up and are now teaching about pain, because there were most of them did not do anything. At U of T, we also now have a center for interprofessional development, and we work with them as well. They have smaller uh, interprofessional initiatives, and and we do work together. I think for all of us, though, ongoing challenges for sustainability include addressing, if you're at that level, addressing student diversity and interests, even at the post-grad level. You know, what are the issues that people, uh, the trainees are dealing with? Providing ongoing reporting to those with curriculum authority. The curricula are packed, and it, they keep having new content. So. As far as I'm concerned, it's every year selling. We have to maintain this, and we keep jigging it depending on responses, but it's critical. Maintaining involvement of faculties and agencies. People change. People retire, get pregnant, whatever, but the, the faculties, the institutions are usually stable. So finding out the leadership and, and working with them is critical. And I think we're all trying to figure out um, how do we measure this in the actual practice setting. We have all kinds of positive comments from what facilitators learn, uh, what our students do in practice, uh, but the issue is how do we measure what the patients, what the students learn in terms of the complexity of care uh, and how they take the team uh, collaboration concept and actually do it with patients. So I'm going to just finish by acknowledging all of the faculties 
that are involved in this curriculum, and also uh, Dr. Bonnie Stevens, who is the current director of the U of T Center for the Study of Pain. Thank you.